We've heard in the last few weeks that a drug called remdesivir was not performing as hoped in trials to help treat COVID-19. But now we're learning from Dr. Fauci that a new trial with the same drug is actually showing promise. Our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, joins us this morning to break it down for us. Good morning, Dr. Coley. So it's interesting. We talked about this drug yesterday morning and its promises. What were the positive findings from this new trial now? So Natasha, this was the largest trial of remdesivir so far. So 1,073 patients. It was an NIH sponsored trial. And what they did was divide up the patients into two groups. Uh, one group that got placebo or the sugar pill and the other group that got remdesivir. And remember remdesivir is thought to work by blocking viral replication. And what they found was there was a significant shortening of the duration of illness. So the median number of days that somebody was ill was 15 days for those that got placebo and 11 days for those that got remdesivir. So 31% sh short shortening or four days of, sh of less illness. And they also compared the mortality or the death rate. And that was also lower. So 8% of people died with remdesivir as compared to 11.6% with the placebo. But take note that the mortality numbers were not statistically significant. So the shortening of the illness was, but the mortality did not achieve statistical significance. But Dr. Fauci did say yesterday that if it's possible if we had more people in the trial that this number may have been statistically significant because it's trending in the right direction. And speaking of trials, why are we seeing these positive results now when the trials that we've done on this drug previously didn't show any promise? Yeah, I was hoping you would ask that question because you're right. Just yesterday and last week, we were talking about how this drug didn't appear to show promise. So what we're seeing here is the roller coaster of science that normally occurs, you know, behind the scenes, but now it's occurring very much in the public eye. And I think it's important for us to recognize that we should compare apples to apples. So the studies were all a little bit different, and there were kind of three main differences between the studies from before and this current one. So the first is something called statistical power, which means this was the largest study. So so because you have more patients, you can actually pick up smaller differences more. You have the statistical power to do that. The other studies were much smaller, so they may not have picked up these small differences. The second was that the patient populations were different. So one of the prior trials that we talked about just a couple weeks ago, it was a compassionate use study. So patients were really at the end of their life, and it was the last ditch effort. This was a little bit different. This was hospitalized patients with moderate to severe COVID illness, so a wider spectrum of disease. And then finally, the timing of the remdesivir is also something that's been variable. So when you give it, how early you give it in the illness may impact the outcome, and that was different between these trials. Yeah, you're right. It really has been a roller coaster ride and what we've been finding. And this is good news because I feel like it takes us one step closer to a possible vaccine. Uh, what type of COVID patients could possibly benefit from this? So, you know, this is an intravenous drug, so it's not something that's available over the counter or something you can take at home. It has not been studied in prevention of disease or in those with mild disease. So at this point, they're really only looking at it for moderate or severe COVID and those that are hospitalized, and obviously it's given intravenously. And I really like to use a baseball analogy when we think about this. Is this a home run? No, absolutely not. It's not a cure. It's not, you know hitting it out of the park, but this is kind of the, the same as putting a man on first base. So we're one step closer. It's helping to focus our efforts scientifically, and it's now given us a drug that does something in COVID, which in my opinion is a big move in the right direction. Absolutely. And it, I, you know, I'm very hopeful learning this news. It's all good news. Dr. Coley, thank you so much for coming on.